don't worry this after the fact plus a bunch of links and a bunch of things um you know that that i want you guys to to read for following up for watching and such so that's the game plan and you know every year it's fun to get when you get to the end of the year to start to be able to and we're already in december obviously first of the month to be able to sort of take some time reflect look back at what worked look back and see what the plan is going to be for 2024 right and you know the way that we sort of look at contemplate this market like what is the best way to start and have a successful art career like what are the things that you need to focus on and i think one of the first really important come to jesus you know scenarios that i think all artists and photographers need to have is you all want to have a successful and growing business what is the best way to do that we believe very firmly that there is one optimal way to do that but it's important to touch on the other three um which you know i think most people don't talk about so let's say that there are really three paths and and hybrids exist as well to make it as a successful artist or photographer in 2024. path number one you are going to try and get your art your creations into galleries right and this is at a high level the dream that every single solitary artist and photographer has but no one ever talks about the actual numbers of it and you know when you go into an art gallery and you get your art into an art gallery which all of you that is the dream right like you just create the art you just hand it to that gallery that gallery sells all of it you're making six figures a year and you're just creating that sounds like a particularly rosy picture because it is um you know the the stats are if you take the top selling artists and photographers that are in the gallery model let's say that are selling six figures a year okay you take a 50 percent haircut on that because you are in the art gallery number one number two you have no idea who is purchasing your work so you have no ability to market to those people in perpetuity and as such you have no ability to be able to develop a collector and fundamentally this business is a collector driven business collectors represent the base salary uh, to an art or photography business. They represent the 401k because year after year after year, you keep creating and the collectors are with you for the ride and they keep buying and they're coming back and back and back again. I always cite, where's my book? Let me grab this. And I'll, I'll send a link to this later, but I love this book by Wyland. It's called Don't Be a Starving Artist. Wyland's the whale guy. Um, most would say the most successful artist probably in the United States, maybe the world. I don't know. I think he does, what, like 50 or $60 million a year. Um, he defines a collector as someone that purchases an upwards of seven pieces of work from him over the course of a lifetime, some many more than that. And I see that in my own customer base. And I should say we've been at this for close to 10 years now. We have a little bit over, I think, 12,000 customers now. And so I've got to see this situation play out again and again and again, where my customers that have been at this for a long time, they create art, a new series, whatever the case it may be, whether they're photos or whether they're art, whatever the creations are, and collectors come back and they buy immediately. And if you do not know who is purchasing your work, you have no idea who your collectors are. Your collectors will be with you for life. And so when you place yourself in a gallery model, um, you have no idea who those people are, okay? But let's go back to the gallery model for a second. So you're selling six figures a year in a gallery. Fantastic, right? $50,000 gets paid to you at the, end of the, at the end of the day, minus all of your supplies, all of your equipment, all your everything else. So that's not a living wage. $35,000 a year, right? Or, or $38,000 a year from your creations. In addition to that, the, the, the sad notion of it all is artists in galleries selling above six figures a year are less than 1% of artists and photographers. The odds are extremely rare to make it to that level. And then when you start going up tiers, it's even more so. And sort of the analogy that I like to give is the folks that are making like a great living selling directly through galleries. And let's, let's just give it some numbers. Let's say that's $300,000 a year that they're selling in the galleries and 150,000 take home. Okay. That's a living wage. That's great. The number of artists and photographers that are at that level in contrast to the number of artists and photographers that are trying to sell their art, it's no different than the number of people that you know that play a sport versus the number of professional athletes, you know, I don't know how many professional athletes you guys know. I know one or two esoterically here or there that are old and retired but the odds are just really really not good that you can have a successful art of photography career in that model in in in, in that modality and i think that's really important i don't think anyone ever talks about that right the dream is always just can i get in a gallery can i get in a gallery and can i get in a gallery let's table the gallery thing for a second the second 
the second most important or the second way that you can create a thriving art of photography business is by becoming a road warrior. And this is a great way to do it. You can sign yourself up for 25 to 35 to 45 shows a year, become a road warrior, get the booth, drive to the show or there, set up, get in that booth, sell as many creations as you can, get back in the car and go home. Absolutely a viable way to build an art of photography career. Difficulties, lots, right? You're on the road, you're paying for booth fees, inclement weather, some shows are hitched, some shows are duds, you're away from your family, you're eating crappy food, you're not exercising, all of the above, right? It's a, it's a, it's a hard way to do it, but it is absolutely an effective way to do it. Okay, great. Number three is selling directly from your website Okay, selling directly to customers and retaining all information on who is purchasing your work and keeping all of the revenue and building a business that way. Now, that sounds great. I don't have to leave my house. I can just create and then, and then I can sell direct. Where, where's the rub in that? The rub in that is that you have to learn how to market. You have to learn how to get your art, your photography in front of enough eyeballs to actually A, know if it'll sell and then B, to sell and continue selling. And, you know, one of, the, one of the things that I say all the time, which I believe very, very firmly, is that there has never in history been a better time to be an artist or a photographer. It is an absolutely incredible business model when you contemplate it. You're able to create. It's not like you have to send out for an injection mold to China or you have to order mi 1,000 minimums or anything else. You're able to create exactly where you are. You're able to show that work off, potentially get paid, and then with print on demand, you know, you can get an order, you get paid, the printer gets paid, you don't lift a finger. Like, there's a million different things that are incredible about the art business. The rub, though, is that you have to learn how to get the art and the photography in front of enough eyeballs to be able to do that. And that's the hardest thing that every single solitary artist and photographer struggles with. You know, how many of you guys on this call are like, I'm talented at what I do. I'm good at my art. I'm good at my photography. I know if I can just get it in front of enough eyeballs, it will sell, right? And I will be able to build a business. That's every single solitary one of you on this call. That is just about every single solitary artist and photographer. You all have a marketing problem. Every single solitary one of you. And... There are so many different vicious cycles that emerge as a result of the fact that artists and photographers, year after year after year, decade after decade after decade, treat their marketing because they don't want to do it like the New Year's resolution, right? A lot of you guys are here right now and you're like, okay, 2024, I know what he's saying. It's right. 2024 is going to be my year and I'm going to start in and I'm going to do my marketing this year for the first time. Seriously, I'm going to grow this business. I'm going to make something of this. I have to do this this year. And no different than the gym membership that you sign up for in January. In January, you're going four days a week. You're off to a great start. But then the road gets tough. And somewhere around March or February, you haven't been to the gym once, right? You quit, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. That is the vicious cycle that all artists and photographers fall into. In, in it manifests itself in a couple of different ways. One, you always quit and give up on the marketing because it's hard and you don't have someone to teach you how to do it and keep you accountable and keep you motivated. But then two, you know, the other huge vicious cycle in all of it is you create the work. Then because you don't do the marketing, you never get the work in front of enough eyeballs to even know if it'll sell in the first place. Then time passes. You get bored with the work that you did create. You abandon it. And then you go and create a new body of work. And then the same cycle repeats again and again and again. And so you got to fix it, right? Like, we have to fix it. You can become a successful artist or photographer, absolutely, if you just fix the marketing problem. And it's the number one problem that all artists and photographers have, and it is not going away anytime soon. It's just not. And you have to fix it. You have to work on it dil diligently. You can't quit, okay? So we advocate a business model that is selling direct, although hybrid models are great, selling direct via your own website, doing your own marketing, if you want to throw in some shows here or there, great. If you're also in a gallery, great. You know, but you, you need to know who's purchasing your work. You need to be selling direct. You need to be keeping those contacts and you need to be marketing consistently. That's how you make it as an artist or a photographer in today's day and age. And the third piece is perspective, okay? Perspective is sorely, sorely needed in this community because no one is out there telling you the truth. 
No one is out there telling you the fact that it takes three to five years to grow a business and art business of any substance whatsoever. That's three to five years of suffering. That's three to five years on learning something that you are uncomfortable learning, which is regular and consistent marketing, how to tell stories, how to capture emails, how to email those emails, how to tell stories in social media, how to run live art shows, how to do discounts, how to do pricing, all of the things that you don't know how to do that you've never done consistently in your life and it is painful to learn, okay? You need to, you need to suffer through that you need to give yourself the perspective and the time of three to five years that it's gonna take you to get your business up running and humming. And if you do that, you will be successful because all the rest of the artists and the photographers quit. All of them always quit. And then rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. I've been running the webinars like this for essentially since COVID hit. So whatever that is now, two and a half years. And week in, week out, I get people just like you guys on this call in every season of life. 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Occasionally I get people in here in their 90s asking for advice. One, one call I had two 90-year-olds and one 96-year-old told the 92-year-old, tell that damn kid to start working on his marketing. It was a classic moment. Anyway, why do I bring that up? I bring that up because I've come to realize that artists and photographers, specifically creatives, that particular gifting, whether you think it comes from God or wherever, that particular gifting is it never it never stops it's not something that you can turn off i sort of just uh, i've sort of assigned it the hotel california line you can check out anytime you like but you can never leave the desire for you guys to sell your creations is not going away it's never gone away you would not be here right now trying to figure out how it's going to work for you right well then why are you here right now why haven't you figured it out? And it is specifically because you've never worked consistently on the marketing. The minute you start suffering a little bit, you're like, get me out of here. I don't want to do this, right? This is painful. Uh, I, I, there's got to be another way. And what do you do? You hop around from solution to solution to shiny object to shiny object and absolutely nothing changes. And then you quit for a little while. And then like the Hotel California line, you're right back to where you started because you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. And that's a really fundamentally interesting thing that I've learned working with artists and photographers as long as I have been. It's working with my customers as long as I have been. So I think those are the three things that are fundamentally the most important thing to understand. You have to nail the business model. You have to realize you have a marketing problem, you need to fix it, and you need to give yourself the perspective of the amount of time that it's gonna take for you to grow a humming business. If you could just surmount those three things, you'd win, right? Now the problem that we've come to discover in our 10-year evolution as a business is all artists and photographers, and I like, to, I like to use my restaurant analogy here, right? You guys are essentially chefs, okay? And, and as chefs, you guys all say your stated goal is you wanna have a really successful restaurant, right? Okay, if you're a chef and you wanna have a really successful restaurant, it stands to reason that we need to go all in on what your superpower is. What is your superpower? It's cooking. So you should be spending all of your time in that kitchen, preparing the meals, coming up with new dishes, making sure the kitchen is operating at top shelf. The problem is, is that you're all solopreneurs. You're all wearing every single solitary hat. And in my restaurant analogy, not only does the chef have to make the meal, the chef is the receptionist and has to answer the phones. The chef is the maitre d' greeting diners. The chef is the, the, the waiter uh, taking orders. The chef is the sommelier and the bartender and the busboy cleaning everything up. Well, if you're gonna be wearing all of those hats, it stands to reason that your restaurant will never grow to more than one or two tables because there's no way you can do all of those jobs, right? You guys have to create the art and then you have to market the art and then you have to sell the art and then you have to do the accounting and you have to do the fulfillment and keep the office running and then live your lives and everything else and so it's really really hard and so why do i bring up the restaurant analogy because our evolution as a business has been okay that restaurant analogy is true so how can we through either software or service knock out those various different roles that you have is that chef trying to run that restaurant as you have fundamentally as an artist or a photographer. And so we started with websites and we have the best art selling website on the planet, okay? And that's where we started and it's great. It's got all the bells and whistles to sell art and photography and you know what it is at the end of the day? It's a damn commodity. It's a damn commodity, it doesn't even matter, it's nothing. You could have the best restaurant in the world but if there's no diners in it, what good is that doing you, right? So we started with the best website period, that exists to sell art and photography. It's not really hyperbole. We don't have any direct competition. Then we stitched together the greatest print-on-demand. And print-on-demand is so fundamentally important to you guys. It is such a game-changer in this industry because before, you would have to drive down to the printer, look at the prints, make sure that they're working okay, 
pay for the order, pick up the order, wait for FedEx to come, send your customers the tracking number, follow up after the fact. Huge waste of time, right? Huge waste of time. So our technology solution is solved for that. Then we started tackling the marketing problem, okay? And how have we gone about doing that? We are fundamentally one part of technology company and we are fundamentally one part of postgraduate university that teaches art and photography, business and marketing all year long. Everything that that encompasses, all the fundamentals of the business, how to market on all the social media sites, how to price your art, how to, how to handle and navigate in-person shows and fairs, QR codes, Facebook and Instagram ads, don't do those by the way, um, how to run print giveaways, everything imaginable, right? And we approach it as a call, no different than a college. We have textbooks that teach you how to do all of these things. We have a calendar that tells you what to do 365 days a year. We have nine Zoom sessions, just like this one you're sitting in here right now, every single solitary week, week in, week out. We had 175 on one in the Thanksgiving Day session, actually, which is rather crazy. So we attempt to solve the marketing problem all year long. We're teaching our customers, you're essentially enrolled in college. When you go out and you get a website, everyone compares us to like a website company. And we do, admittedly, we do an absolutely terrible job. It's like my number one goal to fix, like trying to articulate this next portion that we do. You know, everyone else, take any of our competitors, I don't care. WordPress, Fine Art America, Shopify, uh, Wix, uh, uh, Squarespace, any of them, right? You get the website there and then they say, good luck, hope you do well. You're on your own at that point. With us, you get the website, and then we go, okay, now, now you're starting. Now you're in my class, week in, week out, learning every single solitary thing about this business, and not just learning every single solitary thing about this business, but learning every single solitary thing about this business in a community of your peers, people that are suffering the same way you are, that don't wanna learn this stuff, that don't wanna do this stuff consistently, that need hand-holding, that struggle with tech, that don't enjoy any of it, okay? You're going through it with the community of your peers. So that has been a huge evolution in our business and, and how we solve that and how we approach that and how we go about it. The last, which I find is actually more important, it's not more important, but it's equally important to teaching you how to market, we keep you accountable. We keep you accountable. We keep you encouraged. We pick you up from the lows and try to get you back and working consistently again. We sometimes engage in bribery, sometimes engage in mild harassment. That's usually me, because I scream and yell. I, my goal is to do whatever it takes to ensure that my customers don't quit, because this is a damn hard road to hoe, you guys. And if you are going through it alone, which 99% of artists and photographers are, you don't have a team of employees, right? You have your significant other that's there to offer you encouragement, but they can't help much more than that, right? And so, the fundamental aspects of the community, support, encouragement, uh, uh, constant video chats and, and help every little step of the way is what I find fundamentally to be the biggest differentiating factor between us and everyone else. The minute you start in on your journey with art storefronts, you will never walk alone again. You have support of every stripe imaginable and you can get answers, you can get encouragement, uh, you can get uh, 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 motivation, you go through things in community and you see someone that looks just like you that just figured out how to do this thing you're struggling with and you're like, damn it, if they're not quitting, I'm not quitting. And that's it. And that's fundamentally the ball game. That is how to be a successful artist in 2024. And you know, when you, when you look at the arc of your career and how you got to here, I, I challenge you to go back and look and see how many times has that vicious cycle happened to you. You've created the work. This is going to be your year. You're going to get it in front of enough eyeballs to figure out whether or not it'll sell. You do one little thing and then you quit. How many times does that happen, right? You got to fix that problem. And you don't have to fix it with us. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a hard sale sales pitch, like, but you got to fix the problem. If you don't fix the problem and you don't work on your marketing consistently and you don't realize that you're going to have to suffer for a period of years, you're never going to get there. And everyone loves to tell me like, I'm not committing to that. That's so much work. I'm not doing it. You show me a successful artist that did not go through that three to five year period of suffering. Show me one. No one's been able to do that. You show me an artist or a photographer that is making over six figures a year consistently year after year after year that did not suffer for probably five to seven. And you can't because they don't exist. They do not exist. 
There's no magical secret hack. There's no special list of collectors. No one is coming to discover you. It is incumbent upon you to wake up every single solitary day and move the business forward. When you do, it can be incredible. You're selling your work direct. You can work from absolutely everywhere, anywhere. You can uh, 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 make incredible margins on your art. You can continue increasing your prices. You can go in all sorts of creative endeavors that you love to do, but you have to build up the audience. And I don't know what the alternative is. I genuinely don't know what the alternative is in today's day and age. You are either in the gallery and you're trying to roll the dice that you're a professional athlete, or you are doing the show in Thera Circuit, or you're selling direct and you're learning this marketing piece. So that's what we do as a business at Art Storefronts. And like I said, we're in our, this will be our 10th year, our 10th calendar year this year. And we feel like we're just getting started. Like we're just getting started. We, we fundamentally believe that we have narrowed down what the problem is and it's not marketing consistently, not giving yourself enough time and quitting too early. And we're trying to solve it every single solitary, which way we can. So that's what we do. Um, as a business at Art Storefronts, that's what you can expect. That's what differentiates us from every other outfit that's out there, um, certainly currently. And, you know, it, I'm reminded of this, of this stat, which, which I think is, is really, really interesting. And, it, it, you know, it, it's sort of just incumbent upon the world that we live in in 2024, right? 2023, 2024. This thing has changed everything, right? You can reach the entire world because everyone is carrying around one of these and has their face glued to it all day long. But you have to learn how to do it, and it's hard, right? And if you look at the website Shopify, Shopify is a, it's a Canadian company. It's the biggest company in terms of market cap in Canada. Andrea, I always love saying that, despite the fact it started by a German guy. Um, the stats, and they're an incredible company, but they're e-commerce software for everything, right? We like to think that we're better for selling art and photography because that's all we focus on. But they have a stat. And in 2021 um, was when it was released, the, in, which was a much better economy than the one we're in right now in 2023. The average store owner at Shopify lasted five months. Five months. And why is that? Is that because Shopify's product is bad? No. It's because those folks did not solve the marketing problem. And they quit. Right? And they quit. The website's just a commodity. No one's got a website problem. Website's not going to solve anything. It is the perspective and learning to suffer and get good at marketing. And is... Is brass tax as I like delivering the message, it's actually pretty fun. It's actually pretty fun to go through it. And it's much more fun to go through it in a group. But enough of me ranting. Let's get into the Q&A. How does that work? If you're one of the brave ones, okay, that has your camera on and you have a question, you can go old school hand raise. I'll see that. Uh, and I can bring you on. For everyone else, at the bottom of the Zoom window, there's a smiley face and it says reactions. If you click that, there's a way for you to raise your hand digitally speaking. And I guess it's behind the three little buttons now. It's in there somewhere. I think it's easier on your guys than it is on my screen. Anyway, there's a way to raise your hand digitally speaking, and you can ask questions that way. Um, notwithstanding my little opening remarks rant, I, I, I love helping people. It doesn't matter to me if, if you guys ever sign up or not. Um, I got a ton of reps and sets in, of doing this and been doing this for a long time. I get a look at all of my customers' data, so I have a very good beat on what's actually working to sell art of photography. So if you guys are struggling with something, even if it has nothing related with art storefronts at all, love to hear it. Encourage you to ask a question. Do, do my absolute best to help. Uh, you can obviously ask questions of Andrea too. And if your camera's not on, you don't have to turn your camera on. Don't feel like you need to. Okay, I have a face for radio. If this wasn't my job, you wouldn't have any damn idea what I look like. So don't worry. Um, and it usually just takes one brave person to kick us off. So I'm looking for the one brave person to kick us off with a question. Anybody game on a Friday? Just takes one. Just takes one of you just to go, you know what? I will ask a question. And then they will just start flooding in. Okay, thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. Good. Appreciate you, Jen. You're first. Um, you need to unmute, Jen. Oh, shoot. So you're unmuted, but I can't hear you, which which is weird because you're on your cell phone. Usually that works every single solitary time. Maybe maybe turn up the volume. Oh, yep, there I, we go. Yep, now that? I got you. Now I got you. All right. Fabulous. So, sorry, I'm running errands, but this is my first attempt to actually believe that I have any sort of talent to do this. Mm -hmm. I've had a lifelong dream of being a creator and the drive. Yeah. And, you know, I think you guys, it sounds like you have the whole package and it's super exciting. And that is exactly what I've been trying to find. So, um, 
do you provide, like, I'm sure you do, the analytics to show, you know, how many clicks you're getting? Oh, yeah. All, all, all of it. All that, Jess. I figured that you have all the bells and whistles. Yeah. Um, I guess my, my deeper question is, you know, um, I paint an acrylic, and mm-hmm. I really paint primarily in glow-in-the-dark paint. Okay. And it's it's abstract and fun and colorful, and it's bringing light to the darkness in mm-hmm. the world. And my idea would be to sell a light with my painting as a little package and an experience. And mm-hmm. sure, a gallery would be awesome, but would there be a way to kind of show what it looks like before and in different lighting? Oh, yeah. All day. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Yeah. All day. Easy. All right. Super easy. Oh, cool. I'm total novice, so I appreciate you hearing my question. And for the information i'm excited to learn more awesome okay. awesome love the uh love the light vibes whole different painting at night it's kind of fun actually i totally had black light posters in my college dorm room i'm like remembering like the felt line like bob marley poster I, I don't know if that dates me like a certain generation but you bet you bet your ass i had one of those and i loved it so i'll leave that there I might tell you some deviant behavior i was might or might not allegedly have been engaged in at that particular time in my life and season but that's irrelevant as far as i'm concerned um, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's funny, like er, everyone has the, the tendency to think that, you know, somehow their art, their niche, their thing is different and it, it, it doesn't even matter. Like it doesn't even matter. You know, I'm an amateur photographer. I study photography in school. I, I, I learned from all the greats. Okay. I know all the names. I, I rule, learned the rule of thirds. I had to print things in dark rooms. I understand the difference between a snapshot and, and, and a great photo. Okay. We have people taking snapshots that have good sized businesses and I do not understand it. Okay. But then you realize it's got nothing to do. It's art is truly in the eye of the beholder. And it's so true, right? Like it's 50% the art and 50% you and who you are and what makes you tick. And if people like what you're putting out there creatively and just about anything can sell, you know, somebody, somebody was asking a social media comment just, just a second ago. Oh, I realized I don't have this correctly sized. It's lame. Let's see if this thing still works. And they're like, you know, how do we find out if we qualify? You know how you find out if you qualify? Are you willing to suffer? That's how you qualify, right? If you're willing to suffer and do the work to get there, you'll make it. You'll literally make it. Because there's a tribe out there in today's day and age for absolutely every type of art imaginable. And the crazy thing is, like, you used to have to go out and find them. And now you don't have to because the algorithms, the scary AI, and I agree it's scary, they know where your damn tribe hangs out. And so you start putting out what you're putting out. They analyze what you're putting out. And like, let's use Jen's case, like, you know, the, 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 the photos with the lights on them. They're like, okay, we know what this is because the AI knows. Now I'm going to go and show this to people that like similar things and it finds your damn tribe for you. Now, I don't want to make it sound easy. I mean, let's be honest. I've, I've laid pretty hard on the suffering. Do you know what, do, do you know what it's like? Do you know what it's like? You know, you know, it's like the number one trend right now. It's like, um, you know, the cold plunges and the sauna after the fact, right? Like, what does that fundamentally do? It is suffering either way. And what happens as a result of it, you get mental clarity, you're healthier, or like working out. Like, you want to be fit. You want to have a great body. You want to look good in a swimsuit. What do you have to do? Suffer in the gym or run or anything else. Like, it's, it, 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 we, we somehow just give up the idea that it, it's going to apply to our growing in art business. It's just going to be, I'm going to create and poof. You know, automatically it's going to be awesome. Anyway, um, yeah, Laura Webb, you can just request a demo on our website. That's that's how we do it. Um, and you have to fill out an annoying form, and I apologize for that. We're working on it, but that's that's how it goes currently. But who else, guys? Questions, comments, concerns? Can be anything about anything? Where you are in your business, what you're struggling with, what's working? Guys, are a shy bunch on a Friday. Is it me? Any questions for Andrea? Okay, there we go. There we go, Douglas. See, I had to coax you into it, but I got you. I like it. So when it comes to photography, yeah, you just pretty much go through what we have and then kind of coach us on which ones are the better picks or what would sell best. Yeah, so early on, you don't know, and I don't know, and it's like picking horses right like right it's it honestly like it is 100 percent picking horses it's the one thing that i've learned like you know earlier i was mentioning like the snapshot portion but it, it also works with like art right and and you know i always make this like toilet joke because there's this guy that 
if he ever watches this, he's going to kill me. There's this guy that, that has a, a painting that's not even a very good painting, in my opinion. It's like kind of kitschy, but of, of a frog on a toilet seat. And the caption underneath it says, dropping off the tadpoles. And this guy sold like hundreds of thousands of dollars at this thing. And I, I do not understand it. I would have never picked right. it. You wouldn't have picked it, right? So early on with your photography, especially, you know, you have a big archive. You don't have any damn idea. All of us are just going to be, that's it, right? So, okay, well, how do you solve for that? You make an educated guess, okay? And you throw up what you got. We work on some active marketing. And then we start getting some bites, and then we see what we get the bites on. And it could be a smattering of everything. It could be all into one style that you've got going on or one particular geographic location. We have no idea. And we won't know until we market. So that's why we start marketing, right? Understood. So, yeah. Yeah, everybody has a different taste. So I definitely understand that. Yeah. But also, too, like, you know, what I said is so true is, like, you guys just keep creating. And then it's like it's like you're in a workshop creating this product and then all you have to do is like hitch the horse to the wagon and then drive it down into the town square and show it to enough people to find out if it'll sell and you just never do that right so we have to fix that we have to get the damn work in front of enough eyeballs and you don't know you could hit the lottery right out of the gates and like boom it's selling people are like this is awesome this is amazing or you could find out that whatever you've worked on up until that point in time people don't like it it's not resonating and do you know what that means it doesn't mean you're a crafty photographer I mean, how many musicians do you know that know musical theory that can jam on an instrument that never had a hit song? Their only problem was they quit writing, right? Is they quit writing songs. And, 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 and it, it, it's the same thing. It's the same thing in this niche. So, yeah. So how, how I like that. I totally Thank that. you. Yeah. Thanks, Argus. I totally, I totally wouldn't have pegged you for a photographer. I thought that was a painting behind you. But do you do spectral <laughs> stuff? Uh, no, that's just uh, <laughs> stuff for the shop. Stuff for the shop. Yeah. Um, Jen's got to get some black lights on that, by the way, side note, just quick. Right. There. <laughs> it looks great in black lights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I bet it really pops. All right. Thanks for the question. Douglas, have a great, have a great weekend. Um, all right. Who else guys? Questions, comments, concerns can be anything about anything while you guys are contemplating that one thing I want those of you that do listen to podcasts to check out. Um, I'm happy to report just crossed the 500,000 download mark, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Um, but we have a podcast. It's called the Art Marketing Podcast. It's available everywhere. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify. It's on anywhere that you could get a podcast. Um, and it's good. I give away the farm on this thing. Okay, I teach you all kinds of cool tactical stuff. Uh, comes out in probably every two weeks. A little bit lazy on the publishing this year. Got to get a little better. Um, but it's good. And if you listen to podcasts, and I'll send you a follow up link to it after the fact. But you know, if you can get it on Spotify or get it on Apple Podcasts, I think I think you'll really enjoy it. It's it's good. So there's that. But who else, guys? Questions can be anything about anything, and it's okay if you don't. Everyone's like, "It's Friday. I just, I just want, I just want this weekend jumping off immediately." And it's all good. I totally understand that. Andrea, do you have any questions? Do I have any questions? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh <laughs> Go. So I've been watching Brandon's. Um, uh, build your following course, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. lunchtime thing. I mm -hmm. finally got to watch that. And I had a question about his um, giveaway for the phone um, thingies, whatever you call them. And the strategy he had, I don't know if you know about it. So the strategy that he had is to get in engagement on your Instagram was mm -hmm. to um, give away a free phone's background. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, background, and then have them. DM you because it creates more interaction. Yes. Which is good in the algorithm. So my question was, can I get can I gather their email at that point by saying I'll email it to you? Because he just had a he was DMing them. Is that asking too much? No, not at all. You you, to, you you to, you totally can. Remind me. Okay. I'll I'm I'm gonna do something for you. Um, remind me on Monday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you'll enjoy it. I owe you one anyway. It'll be cool. Good. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Um has to do with bots inside Instagram, which are very, very effective and extremely complicated to set up. But anyway, it's neither okay. here nor there. Yeah, you'll yep. enjoy it. Um, who was asking me, Doug's curious about my, the framing of your camera. Yeah, I, 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 you know what? I should have a better setup than I do, but I have this big ass monitor and then where's the webcam gonna sit, right? Like it's, it's, it's up here, so I could, I could try and get up there, but it just, it, this is just the, I don't know, it's the limitations of my setup. I, 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 need to, I need to level up my game. I appreciate you saying that, Doug, you're right. Ha, ah, you know what I do have though? Check this little lower third out, okay? It's gonna work. 
I don't know, it's down there somewhere. It's typical. I have small children, okay? You know what they like doing? Destroying my setup. Literally moving everything. I was going to show you my super cool lower third. Now I can't even figure out how to... Oh, there it is. It's too big. Ooh, ooh, see? Okay? But I do have... See? I'm on my way to being a news station if I could just size things correctly and get them off of my forehead, but at least I got a fancy animation. So I'm working on some things there. I'm working on some things there, Doug. I hope that's what you meant with your question. But all right, guys. Any other questions going to emerge? Can be anything about anything. I may have missed this already. It was late to the Zoom. Is storefronts able to sell non-traditional art such as peg boards? Yeah, all day. You can sell whatever you want. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to us. I mean, we th our web technology is primarily geared to um, selling wall art, right? But 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 it's also just an e-commerce shop. I mean, I've got customers that are selling books. I've got customers that are selling CDs. I've got customers that are selling classes. I've got customers that are selling uh, tours in national parks where they teach people spectral photography and everything in between. So you can, you can sell literally anything. Um, yeah, you see that? I'm liking you already, Laura. Your fancy animation is very cool. I will take that. I will take that compliment on a Friday. Um, despite the fact, yeah, I got I to gotta, I gotta elevate my, uh, my broadcast studio. I got to go full CNN on this thing. One step at a time, one step at a time. Um, Bev is asking, what is the pricing structure to use this platform? I'm not sure I understand, like how, how do you guys price your art? Is that what you're asking, Bev? Um, if so, I can, I can totally get into that. Or, or how, do we, how do we price, how do, how do we charge you? I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. Might as well find Bev, see if she wants to unmute. I'm gonna unmute you, Bev. You don't have to unmute if you don't want to, but if you want to, you can hit your mic and clarify what exactly you were asking. Yeah, um, well, I guess the uh, the artist would price their own their own work, but then what is the cost uh, to use the platform? Yeah, so the way that we do things is like all the rest of the website solutions out there. We we charge a monthly fee, and so okay, we have a monthly fee depending on which plan that you pick or whatever, and then we charge basically tuition, a one time tuition to get into the university. And the university is basically the entire army of people that are going to support you for the rest of your art selling life. And so you pay that gotcha. once and then it's just a monthly fee. And I don't know exactly what the plans are. We're, first of all, I will, I will full transparency. We are way more expensive than anyone else is. It's not even close. And you know, I don't try to tap dance around or hide that. Um, what we offer is like so significantly different than any other company out there is so above and beyond from a, um, a value standpoint that you really if you're interested you should go get a demo because what today is is like meet and greet do these people know what they're talking about can they actually help me okay it sounds like they do then if you go and get a demo that's like an hour tour of the software behind the scenes all the marketing support all the bells all the whistles all the things and then they'll walk you through all the plans and packages sometimes we run them usually we run them wednesday and friday in in this fashion as well meaning mm -hmm. you can you can show up at one of these or you can you can book the private tour uh, if you're so inclined. And yeah, Jen, uh, Jen, I see, I'll add you to the list. Um, in fact, let me do that now. If I don't do it now, I forget, especially on a Friday. All right, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, hold on, if I don't just, sorry guys, if I don't type this, it'll be right out of my mind. Mary need demos. <coughs> okay, I'm sending it to my guy. Um, all right, who else guys? Questions, comments, concerns? Anything about anything? Before we wrap it up, yeah, I, Doug, are you raising your hand again? Hold on, I'll grab you. I'm moving my little zoom window around. Go ahead, gotcha. When it comes to final pricing, do you guys haggle for us? Not haggle, but I mean, if there's like, what's the breakdown of what you'll, what's the lowest bid that you'll take? Oh, do we, do we, wait, do, 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 first of all, I was totally laughing in my head because you're, you're like, do you haggle with us? And I was like, oh my God, if I, no, 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 if no. my day all day long was just haggling with potential customers of your art, I would die a happy man. I mean, put me in coach. I love grinding. I love haggling. Um, no, we don't really haggle. There's, we run deals all the time, you know, to, you know, this deal, that deal, the other deal. And so we, we always have some pretty crazy incentives going, but you know what? like you always ask right you always ask like you know w one of the one of the smartest things is like would you take you know just just asking every time whether you can haggle or not always ask and see what kind of deal you can get i don't know they might haggle with you in all in all in all honesty but 
that's what you were asking, right? Like in terms of what we yeah. yeah. Correct. Because if I have a if I have a photo that's that I enjoy that or you know many photos, and it's not doing me any good, as far as making it's not doing any good. Yeah. It's making no money. And if I feel it's worth two hundred dollars, you might have a different opinion on it. Oh, oh okay, okay. You're no, you're yeah. So you're asking a different question. So fundamentally, well, no, that kind of parlays with the same with with the same variable. Y- 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 it does. It does to a certain extent. But your pricing, we dial in. Like we dial in. Like everyone, Got it. everyone pricing is like one of God. I love pricing. Pricing is one of these things that people get like so wound up and hung up on and petrified and terrified. How do I charge what I'm worth? You know, how could I possibly raise my prices? Anytime someone comes and negotiates with me, I fold like a house of cards and tell them I'll take 10 bucks and or free. Not talking about you, Andrea. No, not talking about you. Um, People really, really struggle with pricing, right? And the beautiful thing about, about this business is one, you have to have the demand for the art. Otherwise, pricing is just utterly, totally, and completely doesn't even matter, right? Um, but two, pricing is a formula. It's a formula. And it's not a formula that says square inches times hour of time I spent times what my equipment costs times hours in the field. It gets me at this price. That's bullshit, okay? Everyone that says those formulas is complete bullshit. One of my most successful customers swears by the formula. She's out to lunch. I could crush her pricing if she listened to me. So pricing is just a range. What do I mean by that? You have to have items in your lineup from zero to a hundred dollars. In that zero to a hundred dollars, you have to have the non-wall art as a part of your lineup. Why? Because not everyone is ready to buy wall art right now. Number one. Number two, wall art is a bit of a friction-filled process, meaning multiple looks. I gotta go measure the space. I gotta talk to my significant other. There's friction in it, right? So you have to have non-wall art as a part of the lineup. Then you have to have prices from 100 to 1,000, and then you have to have prices at 1,000 plus. When you have the range, okay, you are set up in the best way possible to yield the highest level of results from your marketing efforts, okay? So you're gonna go out there and you're gonna market, and you're gonna attract all kinds of people. You're gonna attract people with no money, you're gonna attract people with a little money, you know, just think of a bell curve, right? The socioeconomic bell curve. No money, lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, high net worth individuals. You're going to go out and market. You're going to attract people that are on every part of that bell curve. You're also going to go out and attract people on that bell curve that are ready to buy wall art right now. They're going to be ready to buy wall art in two years. That are ready to buy wall art in six months and that are not ready to buy wall art, period. And so when you have the non-wall art and the wall art, between the range and pricing, and between having those two things, you're set up to acquire the highest number of customers that you can, Okay. Also, when you have a range of pricing, you'll stop getting lowballed. How many of you guys have been lowballed, spent hours and hours and hours creating something that you want to sell for three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or five hundred dollars at least? And someone's like, "Yeah, I'll give you forty bucks for it." And it's like, "Oh, it's so deflating, right?" When you have the range of pricing, because we human beings are wired to make purchasing decisions based on the basis of comparison. It almost completely eliminates the lowball offers because they understand because you have the range. Oh, I understand why that thing costs five thousand dollars because there's twenty five hundred dollars, there's two thousand dollars, there's one thousand, there's five hundred, there's fifty. I get it, right? Um, so it's it's critically critically important in that in, in that part of the process as well. And, and you might say like, well, how do we how do we achieve that, right? So. Zero to 100, you've got your non-wall art stuff, that's easy. You pick whatever you wanna sell. You wanna sell phone cases, great. You wanna sell mugs, great. You wanna sell greeting cards, you wanna sell calendars, you wanna sell photo books, doesn't matter to me, I could care less what it is. We have print on demand partners for all of it. And then you have really small prints, maybe starting in the $100 range. Then from 100 to 1,000, or maybe from 100 to 800, let's say, we start stepping up the various different media types and stepping up the various different sizes. You've got, you're a photographer, let's say you've got a glossy paper, let's say you've got a canvas, let's say you've got acrylic, let's say you've got metal, let's say you've got wood. So that'll step you all the way up to 1,000, and then let's say at 1,200 we start your limited editions, and your limited editions will go, will go from 1,200 to 10,000. And that's how we do it. And once you have the range, you're cooking with gas, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna register the highest ROA from your marketing activities, which is really what it is at the end of the day. Understood. But we teach you how to do all, all of that. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you an in-depth article on pricing. Um, I also have it on the, on the podcast, a really good episode on it. But everyone gets 
horrified and mortified by pricing and how do I price? And then when you realize, oh, I just have to have this range. And then you just start filling in the boxes on how to create the range and you're done. It's great. It's amazing. You will sigh Thank a you. sigh of relief. Can you even sigh a sigh? I don't know. It's Friday. My brains are cooked. Um, all right, guys. Anyone else? Question before we depart and start the weekends? All right. Well, thank you guys for, for sticking it out with me for almost an hour, um, letting me rant and, and rave. Um, I hope I didn't freak you out with the, you know, continued talk of suffering, but it is. The suffering is real. It has to happen. It has to happen. But once you do, the business starts growing. You have a business that grows year after year after year. Yes, Melissa, I got you. Don't worry. Um, you know, and, and any of you guys, by the way, can request a demo at any point in time. Just go to the website and do it. But for those of you that just said, I want one, um, I, will, I will have somebody proactively reach out to you so you don't have to fill out a damn form on a Friday. Do you know who woke up this morning and said, I want to fill out a web form? No one, because it's annoying. Um, Laura was asking, like, wh what can you expect on a demo? It's, it's just the tour of what the websites look like and what the back end of them look like and how the print on demand works and all of the pricing and all of the plans and all of our community stuff and, and, and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Um, so that is what you get, Laura. It's always weird to like when you're having conversations with the people that are streaming the stream because the stream is like 30, sec 30 seconds delayed and it's like, did I catch them? Did I not catch them? Anyway, oh, you guys wouldn't care about that. Um, I appreciate all of you guys. I want you guys to rock 2024, whether it's with us or, w or not with us. Please do not take any of that today as a sales pitch. I'm not kidding. You got to sell direct. You have to work on the marketing and you have to give yourself the time. You have to give yourself the time to get the business going and get it humming. If you do, sky's the limit. Thanks, everybody.